Could you imagine the power and performance of a DSLR like the 80D in a smaller body? Well, hold on a minute, it's 2016 for Christ's sake. This, the Canon EOS M5, if anything, is really bloody late. When it was first announced, I sighed, eyeball rolled, probably eyeball rolled so hard I was looking into my own head, probably mentioned Sony as well, but then I tried it out at Photokina, and I really liked it. I liked it so much that I went out and bought it. And despite its diminutive size, it's got a really nice grip, feels good in the hands, and best of all, it's made in Japan. Although this Japanese-made grip that I've got has got a bit of play in it. But also, as I'll be making these videos by myself, I thought this will make a great vlogging camera because of this. Boom! And then I could attach my mini tripod to it, like so. Then I can shoot with it like this. Boom! Yeah, maybe not. Can't quite see the screen, unfortunately. Why couldn't they just make it flip out sideways instead of this away? Oh, because then nobody would buy the ATD, would they? Ah, oh, makes sense. Hmm. Alright, so it seems like I bought the EOS M5 for no good reason, but it's got plenty of potential. Can it outwit the intelligence of humankind? And you know, being a mirrorless camera, of course, one of the benefits is the lenses. They're super small. And naturally, that's what I've gone for. The EFM lenses are small, but with an adapter, you can mount Canon's DSLR lenses. So you can pretend it's like a DSLR, but specs-wise, it's actually very similar to the 80D, so you don't have to pretend. But with 7 FPS and dual pixel AF, this is no slouch. Where is he? Here we go. Boom. I can see why Canon is just focusing on the dual pixel AF. Well, not just focusing, almost. It is really good. You can also use the touchscreen to focus and it covers almost the whole frame, just the edges where you can't use. What's more, another neat touch is that you can use the touchscreen to change the focus point when you're looking through the viewfinder. I mean, the viewfinder isn't the biggest of electronic viewfinders, but the refresh rate is good. And using the screen to change the focus points, it's ingenious. When you move that little cursor to focus on the subject, to track it, it's really bloody brilliant. It doesn't seem like a big thing. Sometimes it's the little things that really make a big difference. If that doesn't sound too tacky. That doesn't sound too bad. Come on, PJB. Your ass is mine. Nah. That does. Not like that. The focus feels lively and seems accurate. Immense. But you're not going to be reeling off a seriously sick, continuous burst of shots. The buffer isn't that deep. I just managed to get round that corner and then that was it. Brr, all spent. But it's not supposed to be a sports camera. The thing is, it works well with EF lenses. I like this a lot. This is Canon's best EOS M so far. Killer. Game is over, Paul. Or maybe that's game over for my camera. Fucking piece of shit this is. But look, the focus isn't always perfect. When a subject is coming towards you, the dual pixel AF with this lens isn't quite quick enough. It doesn't change the focus quick enough. For panning shots, it will stick to your subject like glue to a piece of poo, but still. In some ways, it doesn't feel as fast as ATD. In that respect, the ATD still serves a purpose. 
but maybe I should be testing out the M5 on a more suitable subject. Now, for this next race, I believe it's going to be a true test of the autofocusing performance. Yes, we got exclusive behind the scenes access to the Fast and the Furious 8 film set, where I got to shoot Van Diesel on his new ride. Well, now I've got the standard kit lens on this, just in case it's not very good at focusing big 7200mm f2.8 glass. Oh, here they come! Tracking on this. Boom! Van Diesel owned by the USM5. This is much better. Oh, I'm Farmer Joe. So yeah, the EOS M5 is good enough for tracking everyday races between a lawnmower and a wheelchair. The 24 megapixel sensor offers up a decent amount of detail and dynamic range, but what about low light stuff? There is usually a problem with noise test shots in videos. They're usually really boring. It's just a load of shots in the dark with lots of noise. This time, it's a bit different. Ow. Out here with Paul shooting something for Mercedes. Oh, it was a V8 by turbo. V8 by turbo. So it swings both ways. It spins that way and it spins that way as well. And um, no, the idea is Mercedes um, want me to do uh, shoot that they're sponsoring with some for some uh, clothes and, and uh, a magazine and a show. So that means there'll be models, and I don't think this is one of them. A bit too short. But as it's pretty similar to the ATD, I'm kind of expecting the image quality to be exactly the same. In terms of noise, it's probably not going to be brilliant. Let's find out. Now let's get some noise test shots of some pretty people. So just to recap, I'm here with PJB on a car shoot with two models, with a mirror covering the models, slowly cutting their legs in two. Still, at least you can see their faces. Oh. Anyway, the noise test shots. It looks clean from 1600 to 3200. The image, not the feet. 6400, even 12800, still quite usable. Above that, the noise is as desirable as athlete's foot. And yes, noise performance is exactly the same as the ATD. I like this a lot. It's sweet, isn't it? It is. It's so cute. It's good. Oh. It's good for video as it's well. It's a kitten of a camera. It's, it's, it's interesting because usually Canon kind of disable their mirrorless cameras. They put less stuff in it. But this has got more stuff than the ATD. It's got peaking, so it's better for video than the ATD. And then what's more, it's got in-body stabilization, electronic, not sensor shift stuff. It works pretty well actually when combined with a lens which has got optical stabilization. And with none IS lenses, you get some nice steady shots. It's all at a max of 1080 60p. You've got a mic input. Video quality is not stellar, but decent with the Canon colors that everybody loves. But I like it. It's not superb at one thing, just good at everything and quite reliably so. And the dual pixel AF is what makes everything just that little bit more usable. It might have taken a while, but finally now we have a Canon mirrorless worth owning.